the decision by the uh, federal government to set the minimum wage uh, of minimum age actually for university admissions at 18 years marks a significant shift in Nigeria's educational landscape. Well, the Minister of Education, Tahir Maman, announced the policy to stakeholders at the 2024 uh, Joint Admissions Matriculation Board's policy meeting on education uh, right here in Abuja. Well, uh, Maman insisted that the law requires children to be in school at 18 years. However, it has attracted opposition and controversy. And for good reason too, you might say. Now, let's bring in former Commissioner for Information in Adamawa State, Ahmed uh, Sajo. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on Newsnight. Good yeah, to thank, have you here thank, again. Thank, thank you very much. Now, this whole talk about age limit for university education being put at 18, some would say there are more pressing issues in Nigeria's tertiary institutions, you know, to be talking about age limits at 18. I mean, what exactly do you think is the motivation uh, for this policy? I is it a sound policy? I, I, I think we are making a very huge mistake. There are mm. certain things that happen, you know, that we look at them as being inconsequential. But over time, they become real consequential to our growth as a nation. Uh, while, while one may excuse the fact that we are in an era when there is information explosion. So younger people come across a lot of uh, information that makes them a little bit wiser than those of us at, at the time we were their age. And so it, it, it makes people feel that, okay, young people can advance as quick as they can. But the truth about it is that, you know, we have chronological development and we have mental development. Mm -hmm. And we have, we've had, I, 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 I am part of a board of uh, an organization that is concerned about suicide rates in the country generally. Right. And we realize that uh, majority of young children in schools that commit suicide are those that are not really prepared mentally to be in the free atmosphere of a tertiary institution. And then they are suffering from undue pressure from their parents, expecting them to perform wonders mm. because they have uh, had this uh, ability to perform very well at the lower level. So we, 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 I think that young people who are not really very matured, whose cognitive level is low, are more susceptible to you know, uh, cracking under heavy pressure in the schools. And they are also the ones that are very easy to convince to join uh, associations that are not really very, very clean and clear. But that is not, in fact, where I am even concerned. Right. Let me tell you where I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an education system that is based on a curricula that has been developed based on uh, scientific research right. and it says you spend six years in the primary school mm -hmm. six years in the secondary school and then go to the university yes. now these days what parents have done is that majority of schools in Nigeria have cancelled primary six mm -hmm. students advance from primary five, five. Mm -hmm. That primary that five has been the case since my time secondary that, school. that I mean, not I secondary school I'm talking of primary right. school okay Right. They, they, okay. they, 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 now, they now finish primary school in primary no five. No primary six. No primary six. Now, some private schools are tacitly redu re reducing it to primary four. But all, all the parents need to do is to pay the school fees for the other uh, classes. So it was, it's the money that is being taken yeah, more seriously. Yeah, but is it not a regulatory failure at that, 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 that it, level? It is, it is, it is. Is it, it not is. an indictment on the quality of education, foundational education, primary the school, secondary, secondary school, school. Now, that you'd have in secondary school now, enter university without being prepared, prepared. for the, you know, then, for then, the average Then at the secondary school level now, mm -hmm. you would see that most of the chaps that are in secondary school today, they take their WAEC, NECO, and JAM either at SS2 or in extreme cases, SS1. And so, so children are not getting all that they need to get as per the curricula to prepare them mentally for, uh, for, 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 for being useful citizens so in the future. So you think the sound idea is to stymie so, but, the, the, but, or but arrest I, their development before I, I going think, to tertiary education? Uh, no, I think what happens is that 
if we insist that the education system says 6334, right. let them do the six in primary school, mm -hmm. let them do the six in secondary school, yeah. and then they can go to the tertiary institution. And I, I, I believe government is trying to find a way to make sure that if a child enters primary school at the age of five, for example, mm -hmm. and he does six years in primary school, that makes it 11. Yeah. If the child goes to secondary school and spends six years, that is at least, at the minimum, 17. And at 17, by the time the tertiary institution, uh, you know, semester opens, the child may be in the late days of 17 or 18. Yeah. But some would argue that in yeah. 2024, at a time when more and more young people are, you know, showing uh, themselves to be genius, that this policy is at best uh, backward, like setting Nigeria back. No, I don't think so. The one that is setting Nigeria backward mm. is not allowing children to complete the curricula they are supposed to learn at their formative stage. The curricula is developed in such a manner that a child's mental capacity, a child's cognitive, cognitive capacity is developed based on certain quantum of knowledge mm -hmm. that the child is supposed to have accumulated. And if we continue to allow it to be truncated, mm. I am telling you that, you know, uh, parents will begin to insist that their children move from primary three to secondary school. And, and that may not be very good for the child's mental development. Yeah, but some also in, in arguing against this idea are saying that, look, what is the possibility of, of you know, ensuring a uniform policy across the country, considering that, say in the North, for example, North continues to be seen as educationally disadvantaged. And when you now add this into the mix, you're further disadvantaging, uh, you know, students from the North, for example. And you're stopping those exceptionally gifted children in, you know, different parts of the country, including, of course, the North. I mean, that's not to say there are no uh, the last, you know, uh, the last, gifted children in the North. The last common... It's not the, setting them back. The last common interest for children that would go to the special secondary school in Suleja, are the gifted children. Mm. Zampara came first. It doesn't, there is, we have geniuses right. all over the, 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 the country. The point I made it. It, yeah. it doesn't really matter. But what matters is that, look, if we have a curricula mm -hmm. which has been designed and presented, we, mo we should at least respectfully allow our children go through this curri curricula. Let the curricula be designed in such a manner that whoever goes through it, reaches a certain le cognitive level mm. in his life or her life before going to the tertiary institution. Yeah, that's why it's some would say the Minister of Education and those handling our education should be more concerned about the quality of the education, quality, both exactly. from the primary, you know, secondary, but and of course they too. tertiary and, and then, uh, and then the, but, but, but there's an issue I'm raising that we must start begin to argue against. Wh which is? Which is that private schools should not be insisting that Parents should pay school fees in lieu of the period their children should remain in school. That is... Is that the practice? Yeah, it's the practice That's now. the job of the regulator to ensure that... To that ensure that that, practices, does, that yeah. does not happen. Yeah. You know, because mm -hmm. doing that again, just like we also... You, know, you, know, you also know that, you know, I, I, I worked in the university and I worked in the education sector to some extent. Mm -hmm. there, there are even secondary schools they call wonder centers where you can go and pay money for your child to pass. How can you start a child's life on fraud? And you expect that that child to start thinking that... That's a whole other discussion. It, so so, so yeah. all I am saying is that we need to ensure that our children go through all the curricula that mm. they're supposed to go through, yeah. six years in primary school, six years in secondary school. And uh, we, we, we need to encourage them to be more matured, mentally prepared, to, ad to address issues that have to do with school. And we need to reduce our pressure on our children. You yeah. know, this, not all the children actually withstand this pressure. A lot of these children break down under the pressure of that is being put on them by the parent. That you must do this, you must achieve this, you must achieve this. Yeah, and especially when it comes to university and, education. And, and so when they are young. The system does not provide for when, vocational education. When they education are young, what have you, you know, have to live there. they break down. Yes, and indeed. we should, and, and they commit suicide. And, you know, that, that is very, very, very bad for but our But we system. also underrate the capacity of these young children. No, Ahmed, Ahmed Sajo, former chairman, uh, commissioner of information at Damawa State, thank you very much for joining us on News. Now.